Hey folks, how you doing today? Welcome to Art Journaling in September for the first Sunday. It's very exciting to have um, Art Journaling once a week now. Very excited to move forward with that. I have a piece of Canson watercolor paper here, and I have covered it with some Liquitex Professional Gesso, um, and uh, just using a big De La Rowney Simply Simmons wash brush. Give that a quick heat dry. Um, it doesn't have to be perfectly dry before we move on to the next step, but if it's dry, then it doesn't get as messy. Now I'm going to get out some gesso. This is by Blick, and uh, this is a heavy gesso. It has a lot more body to it than the Liquitex gesso. And fairly frequently, I actually do find myself using two gessos. And uh, just because they have different consistencies, and, and they're both a base, and they set my project up to work with other acrylic-based products on top of, but uh, they have different consistencies and create different things. So at first, uh, I was just kind of scraping it across the back of the page for some texture and dimension. And then I kind of got this bright idea to create some texture in my background. So I've got it back out, the gesso, and I'm creating a bit thicker layers in this background. And by thicker, I kind of talked about this in the art journaling class, by thicker I can't really tell you how thick, you'll have to kind of test it out yourself. But it's thick enough that I can dry the top layer without the underneath of the gesso being completely dry. And the reason is because I want to stamp into it to create texture. I did this for the Donna Downey Stencil Mania month last month using stamps, but then I was walking in my art studio and I have all these really cool embossing folders that are very similar. So I wanted to try and see if the technique would work the same. And I was pretty sure it would, and it does, and it's so cool. So what I've done is I've heated the top layer of the thick gesso so that there was still some give to the inside. And then I just pressed the embossing folder directly into it, and I let it dry. Trying it again in this area, I wanted it to be a bit more... Um, prominent. It, it, it's, it's a really great subtle detail in the background. Depending on how thick you make your gesso, of course, it could not be subtle. It could be like really in your face, cool, deep texture. But for this class, when I was uh, planning it out for the art journaling gals, I wanted specifically to show them like mark making and different ways to make real and fake texture in their art journaling pages. So this is some real texture where we stamped in the background with an embossing plate, an embossing folder as texture in the gesso. So that's all dry. Now I've gotten out some golden fluid acrylic and a paintbrush, and I'm going to do some mark making. So the thing that I love about mark making is that you can make marks with anything. So it can be found objects, um, you know, like, like things you buy at the dollar store or sponges or lids or whatever, um, but you can also make marks with stamps and stencils. You can make marks with your paintbrush, with your fingers, uh, with anything, bubble wrap. And I actually do have a mark making uh, video on YouTube when I, where I first learned about mark making. And I really wanted to kind of help my art journaling students kind of get a grasp. But there's so much more that I could never tell you about mark making just because you can make a mark with anything. So definitely kind of look at what you've got laying around like buttons make good marks here I just made some very fun stripes totally free-handed and then because I used the golden fluid acrylic when I added some water to it then it ran very deliciously um, there are plenty of tools that was a catalyst tool by Princeton I was kind of showing you some <clears throat> excuse me, some some kind of fun other chunky lines that we could make. And I ended up getting out my script brush and I'm kind of holding it loosely and just letting it kind of wobble around to create these striations, I guess you could call them. They have they have no no necessary uh, purpose, just another way to make marks. Here's a button that I'll use to create some circles. And I save circles a lot for my mark maker, so I have buttons and caps and lids and jars and old spice containers and all kinds of things to make really great circles. And this is exactly why. So I can have some different sized circles kind of hanging out all over my page, whatever I'm working on. 
then I just love to activate that paint and really get it watery and grungy. And the great thing is because we started with a gesso base, as long as you work fast enough, and it doesn't have to be super fast, just keep some paper towels and some baby wipes on hand. When you add that water to them and it activates, if it's a little bit too much, you can sop some of that color up. And you can still have some grunginess, but it's not too much overwhelming the entire page and you lose your marks. Very cool. I am completely loving where this is going. It's making my heart so happy. I'm just heating between the layers, um, making sure that the next layer I put on it isn't going to smear into it or smudge or anything like that. And the great One of my favorite things about acrylic products is that you can do that. So you work layer by layer and as long as you heat and or, and or dry between the, the layers then the next one is just going to be on top of it. And they will bond together um, but they're not going to impede each other. I decided to get back out that same size paintbrush and create um, a darker section on the side because the stripes on the other side were very dark and, and um, intense compared to kind of those striations and circles that I had made. And now I am going to glaze. So I saved the glazing for last specifically so that the art journaling group would kind of concentrate on mark making and not the stuff that they already had going on with glazing. But I'm using the leftover paint, the it's carbon my goodness, sorry, it's carbon black fluid acrylic paint by Golden. And then I added glazing medium. And I was telling the art journaling girls about this. Uh, we live in the desert, so we do, and I've kind of figured this out on my own, um, I do about a quarter or a third, like right in there, of paint, and then the rest is glazing medium, so three quarters or two thirds glazing medium. And the reason is because we live in the desert and it dries a lot more quickly here, and I we don't want those kind of like funky harsh lines. So then I'm using some baby wipes to pull, I mix the two together and spread it over the whole page, and it gives me a bit of working time. And then I'm using baby wipes to wipe up the excess. And you can see now all that texture, look, that's the embossing folder, how cool is that? Um, all that texture that we got from the page and and things that we put in the background and then also where we made some marks and I'm going to redo this corner here because I know that I had that really great embossed impression there there it is and it just quite wasn't standing out on its own done how cool is that and it's just kind of an exercise in mark making and creating texture so thanks so much for joining me. I hope there's some inspiration here. I can't wait to see what you do. Um, subscribe to me. We're doing art journaling videos weekly now and then also other videos scattered in between those. So uh, thanks so much for being here. See you next time.